all right guys what's going on welcome to another android tutorial now in this uh, video series we're going to look at um values and resource selectors because i believe this is an area that's incredibly useful i use these all the time i've never actually done a proper video on them so as always we're going to create a new project now we're just going to keep the android project to android 4.0 and higher because i'm not arsed changing it anymore and we're going to make the target android 4.3 okay so the application name will be resources resources i don't need to think that's even spelled correctly but you know whatever uh just launcher icon blah 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 usual nonsense main activity so this won't contain any comp uh, fragments or anything like that we're just going to do solely resources so our resource selectors more than anything. So we're gonna go in here and open up our main activity file. And we're gonna be working with a lot of XML for the next few videos, so I've increased the XML size. So guys, what are resources, essentially? Our Android resources. So Android resources are in this reds folder here. And resources uh, fall under generally four major types, drawables, layouts, menus, and values. So, uh, as you know, the drawables fit under here. Now, before we get in, uh, into actual selectors, as we know, drawables are simply images. Um, layouts are your XML files uh, describing where everything goes on the screen. Uh, your menu describes your menu and your action bar. So here we have one item in it, which is the standard uh, it's the settings which is in the overflow for the moment and then our values store all our values now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these values folders here we don't need those actually you know what go into one of these because we're compiling against android 4.0 we can copy and paste this theme and we can delete these folders here and in the value styles, we can change this to this one here. The app base theme to hollow light, dark action bar. Because it's all Android 4, we don't need to uh, have any compatibility issues. We don't need to bring action, uh, action bar compat in or anything. So, well, it's taking a time to load, isn't it? Still loading the framework information. Okay, so we'll ignore that for now. And uh, we're not even gonna need it that much, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to our text view and our activity. So if you look here, look, it's a relative layout with a text view in the middle with a string, hello world. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna very quickly Add an ID to this. ID equals at ID slash text view. And then we just uh, reference the text view. So once we've set our content view, we just reference it by saying really bad text view oh bam Graphical layout would feckin' load. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for this to load anyway. Be back in a minute. Okay, so to in order to manually do the uh, ID, you have to say at plus ID. And that adds the ID to the uh, uh, generated files. So anyway, we have all this ready to go. Um, so we have our text view. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of values. Now, the main point of this video is to describe how Android's values work. So whenever an activity starts, so a new screen comes up, if you reference a view, so see this here, set content view or dot layout dot activity main. If we reference that view, that there, it goes or layout activity main. That's what's actually referring to is this file and it loads it. Now, if you look here in the uh, drawable folders, you can refer to drawables by or dot drawable dot whatever. But if you refer, look at these here, look, all these have the exact same file in each one. Now, what, why is there an exact same file? And what's this dash HDPI mean? They're called resource selectors, I think. Or that's what I like to think of them as. So essentially on high density displays, when it's high def, uh, dots per inch, the device will auto select that particular one. So what happens is, uh, you know, the Android device goes, this is a high density device. Let's look for a selector that fits it. This, this folder here, drawable HDBI fits it, brings up the large version of it. And then if we go to XHDPI, you can see there's a much larger high resolution version. So that's how that's generally how it works, these selectors. So if we have a layout and we can add a, a resource qualifier to one of these. So what we can do is we can right click, new folder. We type in layout dash uh, whatever qualifier we need to. The qualifiers are massive in this. You can have a uh, landscape portrait. Um, you know, so there's landscape qualifiers, there's portrait qualifiers. You know, land is one, port is the other. You have different densities, different widths, different screen sizes, different Android versions. So you can have like V11 or V14, which will refer to Android V11 or Android V14. And, and the Android system will always select the one with the best qualifier. So it starts from like the top down. So what happens here is, see the way we have three here, values, smallest width, 600 dips, values, smallest width, 700 dips, land. So what happens is if you have a 720 dip screen or wider, that, that refers to, by the way, a 10 inch tablet in landscape mode. So you've got that screen width, and it's there in landscape. If you turn it to portrait, it goes, okay, 700 dip width, 720 dips, landscape. Okay, land, this device is in landscape, it's in portrait. It will fall back to the next one and that, and the device is 600 dips wider. So it loads that. And if it was a phone, it would skip that. I'm not 600 dips wide, I'm 220 dips wide or whatever it is, and falls back to the next one. So what we're going to add in here is, you can see our strings XML. We're going to add a new XML file to all these folders. So we're going to new one. And we're going to call it values. And we can't call it well, values. We'll just call it examples. So I'll show you how this works. And here you can add the different qualifiers for the folders. So we have our examples. And we're going to copy and paste that into all three folders. So now we have a resources XML tag. So now, what do we do? Well, make sure now, up here, if we open up this one here, look, examples. It doesn't tell you which one it is. Very, it tells you up the very top of your window. Now I've crip cropped that off in this video, but up the top, it tells you like Java equals resources, res, whatever, whatever, whatever. And it tells you which one you're in. Make sure you understand where it's coming from. You can get very easy into a mess. So, the first thing I'm going to do is in our uh, values folder, I'm going to open up the file and we're going to uh, bring in, we're going to, here's all the different values we can put in. Now there's more than these here. We're actually just going to put in a string. Okay. Name it so it needs an identifier. So the name for the string is just going to be, um, you know, We'll just call it, we'll identify it as string. And we'll say then, uh, you know, device is on fallback. The thing you have to remember about this is never ever try and qualify every single device. You can't do it. The values folder, the plain values folder, the plain layout folder, and a plain drawable folder, which isn't there, those devices 
you should always have everything qualified there and then add extra things for larger devices. So anyway, this is the devices on fallback. So we're going to copy and paste these resources into our other files. So examples. So device is greater than and is in small width 600 dips. I'll explain the 600 dips now in a minute. And then if we go in here and do the same thing again, 720 dip dash land. And now to display this in our thing, we're very going to simply get our string in our activity. So string text equals context of this dot get resources. This can be got from any context. Uh, in Android. So get resources dot get string. That's the wrong one. Get quantity string. I did not want that. I want a string. Now it's or dot string dot string. I'm actually should rename that. But anyway, look, it says get resources, get string or dot string. That means it's in resources in string. So we've got that. And now we're just going to say text view dot set text. Text. OK, so now we've got that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this on a myriad of devices. I actually have uh, four devi three devices powered up here on Jenny Motion. The first one is a Galaxy S4 emulator. This is a 10 inch tablet and an Nexus 7. So we'll run it on all three. So the first thing we'll run it on is once it's built on the uh, Jenny Motion Galaxy S4. And we'll see what the uh, main activity sh will say. So devices on fallback, that's all it says. Okay, so now if we run it again on the Nexus 7. Oh, great. The tablet is causing it to freak out. Emulator is exploding. It's just rotating the screen and doing a bunch of stuff. What? Hmm. Hang on a second, I need to restart this emulator. Okay, so the emulator is restarted, so if I just uh, rerun the uh, thing on it, Nexus 7. So the device is in 600 dips width. Don't forget, this is in landscape mode. If we uh, rotate the device, which I actually can't work out how to do, and it just locks it. Um, Anyway, that's, yeah, that's essentially, it's in 600 dips width. And then if we run it again on a 10 inch tablet. Ah, there it is there. This is the 10 inch tablet. Device is in 600 or 720 dips width land. So the qualifier there is actually saying smallest width 600 dips. Now you're probably wondering what, what the hell is a dip? DP. A dip's an Android unit of measurement essentially it's a density uh, independent measurement. Now why do we need this? Well, if you look at a Galaxy S2 and a Galaxy S, actually you know, look at a Galaxy S4 and a Galaxy S3, their screen sizes are very similar. I think it's like 0.2 of an inch in between. But the Galaxy S4 is twice as dense. So if you measure something in pixels, it's going to appear smaller. Because 10 pixels by 10, an area 100 pixels by 100 pixels is a lot smaller on the Galaxy S4, is physically smaller on the screen in an area 100 pixels by 100 pixels on an S3, and it's even smaller than an S2. So the dip measurement, essentially when you say 100 dips wide or DP, it's always the same width on every device. Regardless, it basically dips mean a width in an actual physical size, you know, like an inch. 
and 160 dips is the equivalent of one inch on a screen because one dip equals one pixel on a 160 width screen. So if your pick screen has 160 uh, dots per inch, that means that um, each dip unit is equal to one pixel. However, in the Galaxy S4, for example, it's probably nine pixels per dip. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I think it might be four actually. But you see what I mean? A dip means it's a certain measurement. So smallest width 600 dips means that the actual screen width, like the length of this screen from this side to this side here is 600 is a uh, larger than 600 dips that's the smallest width that can use that is 600 dips wide and this one here is 720 dips land and if we rotate it look the device picks 600 width dips if i increase its size you can see it there a bit more legibly so that's resource qualifiers automatically as you can see each time the activity loads it's actually going for those qualifiers and going oh hey this size suits me and rendering them and that's amazing the way Android can do that for us it's a really useful thing to be able to do now where this comes really into power uh, which I'll get into in the next video is with resources and XML files but anyway, that's the basics of resource qualifiers for different screen sizes that's what I call this video resource qualifying for screen size in this video we'll do android versions and stuff in the future but anyway guys that's it for this video hope you enjoyed the next video we're going to get into where it's really useful with actually refining it in the layout so anyway guys as always it's been good talking i'll see you out there